welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to do another watercolor from my watercolor kit with my fairy houses that are available in my Etsy shop. Today I am going to be doing this teapot. Um, in last uh, month, if you caught it, I did do the mushroom um, fairy house. So in the kit, you get five of these um, drawings and they are on watercolor paper. Um, and then you get a practice sheet and a watercolor dots um, page, which I've already used with um, the, the mushroom house. On the back, there are instructions so that you can follow along if you'd like to do that. Um, but what it basically tells you is to tape down your 5x7 watercolor onto a tabletop. This helps with buckling, and that's just when you add water to the paper, it could buckle a little. By taping it down, it just helps um, with that. And then <clears throat> you're gonna activate the paint and start painting. Uh, once it's dry, you're gonna gently peel off of the washi tape, um, and then admire your work, hang it up, give it to a friend, um, whatever you would like to do with it from that point. So let's go ahead and get started on this teapot. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is tape it down. I do have some washi here. And you don't have to be super precise about the edges unless you do want to fill um, the back with, um, with paint. But the idea is for you to kind of fill it in like an ink and wash. So if you're not familiar with an ink and wash, um, what you would generally do is, hold on just a second, there we go. What you would do is you would draw your image with ink, um, preferably from like a micron pen, for example, and then you would put in your watercolor, which would be the wash over the top of it. So that's where the idea of an ink and wash comes from. Um, you can see me do some of that work on my um, channel. Um, but this is just a way that I can provide you with the inking process and then you can come in with the watercolor for yourself um, as you work with your kit at home. So today we're gonna do a paint with me. If you're not familiar, the kit does come with a water brush. I've already filled it with some water. Water brushes are great because you already have your water with you and you can squeeze and let that water come out and work with it. Um, but I always recommend that you have a little bit of water um, on kind of on the side if you do need to um, use it for anything. So I would definitely recommend that you have water, um, a paper towel, the washi tape to tape it down, and then you should be good to go. You can use other brushes if you don't wanna just use the water brush, but that's really all that you need. All right, so with my um, tea rose, I'm sorry, with my fairy house, um, I would really, like to make this fairy house uh, purple teapot. So I'm going to start with my Sprightly. You can always use your paintbrush to activate the watercolor just by squeezing and adding a little bit of water. But I love to use um, these so that I can just add some water, like a little dot of water to each of the watercolor and then I can activate the paint that way. It's super easy. You can pick up these little um, eyedroppers um, at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. They're usually in the craft section um, and I have also seen them in the mixed media um, section as well. So you can do that but that will activate all of your paint for you on your um, watercolor dots page. And then like I said I want to paint the teapot itself with um, purple. So I have this sprightly color right here that I'm going to be using first. And um, I'm going to be filling this in. I think I'm going to start out light. I'm not going to go like super dark um, and just fill in because the, it does have some polka dots. And here, let me zoom in a little bit. So it does have polka dots on the pattern. 
and I do want those to show. So I'm going to try not to go like um, really heavy on um, the purple paint so that those dots still show through. So now that I have all of the purple in there, um, I will zoom out a little bit so that you can see. I've got all of the purple there. I didn't cover it like with a solid color. I just kind of, as you could see, kind of moved my brush around. Um, not to make it so um, solid, but a little more, like you can see some of the white coming through. I am going to add a little bit up here to the top just so that I can tie that in. I'm going to do these two rows here. Okay, so now I have my purple on there. Remember, you can just squeeze and rub your um, brush back and forth on the paper towel and it will come clean. All right, so the next thing I'm going to work on are these stones, and I'm going to use the Moon Glow. The Moon Glow is a very pretty um, kind of gray color but it has some blue and some purple tints in it so you're gonna see that it kind of picks up that purple um, but I'm going to go ahead and fill these in, each in individually you don't want to like cover it all with um, one solid swoop of color you really want to take your time and um, color in each one of these stones and the reason is because that um, it's going to give it more of like a stone look because your it's not like one solid piece you can see there's a little bit of white and so it gives it kind of like um, there's a reflection happening there and then also um, the color is going to kind of bleed within that stone that you've colored in instead of blending into the other stones so if you know anything about um, watercolor, when you put the water, that's where the water stays. It's only going to bleed into another color if you merge those two um, water droplets together. But if we keep those water droplets separate within each one of these stones, then you're not going to get that um, taking place there. Okay, and I'm just going to work my way over on the other side. Okay, so now I've got those stones um, filled in, but I really want to add a little bit more um, of the darker color here and there. So I'm just going to kind of go back in and add that. Maybe this one, maybe this one down here. Just so I have a little more variation within those stones. Okay, good, like that. Okay, so then down at the bottom, I'm going to add some grass, and I'm gonna do that with the sweet pea color. So I'm gonna grab some of this sweet pea color, and I'm just gonna start right at the bottom here, kind of play with some of those little pieces of grass. And then I'm just gonna kind of work my brush down and I'm not going to um, make this whole section green. I'm just gonna kinda have the paint um, become less once I come down here to the bottom. So you're gonna get a lot there towards the teapot, and then when you come down, it'll come, you know, barely anything down here at the bottom. So it just kind of looks like it fades off the page. Oh, I just realized, there you go. 
So as you can see with the paint and as I bring it down here, it just kind of fades off the page. You don't really see the the grass down here at the very bottom. You're just going to see it kind of um, start dark at the top and then work your way down um, so that it's very light down here at the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna take this same sweet pea color and I'm going to do this group of leaves that's kind of falling down this side or gathered down the side of the pot. I do have a little bit too much paint. There we go, that's better. And then I'm just going to work my way down those leaves. And then there's a few leaves right there. Okay, and then my door, I'm going to do the sunburst color. So I'm going to go ahead and get that green off of there. I'm going to go into my sunburst color, which is my yellow. And I'm going to do the door. Again, you can leave little bits of white. The yellow door. And then I'm going to make these um, yellow with some orange around them. These leaves going around this window. So I'm gonna start with this yellow color. And while it's still wet, I'm going to go in with the Foxgrove, which is the orange color, and I'm going to add it just sparingly right around the inside of the petal. Just give it a little bit of dimension, and it's just going to kind of bleed into the other color. And that's what I meant by down here. We didn't want those color or the colors to blend, but up here in the petals, um, I do want them to blend. Okay, and that's just gonna give it again some dimension because it's gonna be darker on the inside. I'm gonna let that dry and then I may add some more there. Okay, and then I've got these, um, these flowers that are just kind of here and there and everywhere. And I'm going to paint them different colors. So I think some yellow um, and some um, the sugar berry color and then maybe some of this tea rose as well. So let's start with the tea rose because it is the brightest. grab the willow color here and go in with these leaves okay and the back of this the top of the knob And this green ivy too. Okay. 
So now that I have this willow, I'm going to come down here to these little patches of um, grass. Now that this has dried, and I'm going to add some of that willow down here. And over to the side. Okay, and a little bit just running across the bottom here. And just kind of blend it out. Okay, good deal. All right, I'm gonna go back to this window here now that it has dried a little bit, and I'm gonna add a little bit more of this um, Foxgrove color to a, some of the insides of the petals. Okay. And then I'm gonna take this hazelnut color and I'm gonna do the trim on the window. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the trim on the window over here as well. Okay. I'm gonna take that hazelnut and I'm gonna add a little bit um, of the hazelnut to the bottom of these wood pieces from the door and the top. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go back into this stone here at the bottom, make that match the moon glow. a little darker on the top. And here as well. Okay, we're almost done. I do wanna add some of the gold accents, but I think before I do that, I wanna go in um, to this top part with some of the purple. Now that I see it, I think I just wanna go ahead and fill that in with some purple as well. Try not to get it too dark. And I do also just note, make sure that this ivy is dry before you do that. Otherwise it'll bleed into the purple. Okay. All right, so then with my gold accents, I'm going to make this up here at the top gold, gold flower. This thimble, gonna make that gold. And these gold rings. Okay, and then this bottom part of the door, I'm gonna make gold along with the hinges. Got two hinges. And then I'm going to trim this out with gold as well. Now I'm not gonna do the circles, I'm just going around the circles. As best I can, it's just a preference. Okay, and then I've got this stripe here, and I think what I'm gonna do is go in with the T rose. And do every other one. And up here as well at the top. almost looks like um, like a candy cane because it's got the two different colors there. 
striped like a candy cane. Okay, and then I'm going to do a little bit of the curtain with this pink. Now I'm just dabbing it on, I'm not like filling it in. Oh, and then I'm going to go ahead and do this uh, ivy along the handle with the willow so that it matches the other ivy. Is done now you can definitely go in and maybe do some last-minute um, details like I always do this I kind of look at it and see where it's lacking and where it may need some um, dimension so I'm gonna say underneath the um, window for sure and then right here at this edge with the um, teapot because as we know that that's back a little further so that in the handle or back a little further so I'm going to do that and then I think I'm also going to go up here and add a little bit more purple and then I'm going to grab that willow and add it to these flowers hanging down from the top there we go All right, and this gold has dried now, so I'm going to grab the willow and I'm going to pop it in each of the circles. Okay. All right, and there you have it. My teapot is done. So now I have completed two of the five in my fairy house series um, when it comes to my watercolor kits that are available in my Etsy shop. If you're interested, go check them out. The link is below and um, follow me along with another uh, paint with me. I'm going to continue on in this series until I get through all of my fairy houses. Thanks for watching. Bye.